Welcome back to Eden Chronicles 100 Heroes. In the last episode, we made our way here to Hishan, Old Town. Now let's continue through this area. Got a little bit left to complete. Definitely a pretty unique dungeon. Big mistake. Okay, we got two of these Nakaris. I don't know what they do yet because we haven't seen them attack yet, but I guess we'll, we'll probably be able to see their attack in this battle. Uh missed. Okay, they can hit the front and the back row. That's kind of dangerous. Uh, nope, I'm not going to reward you with anything. You get, you're lucky enough to be in my party to get leveled up. Oh, we gotta go hit. There we go. Figured it out. Let's do this. I'll probably get rid of the Nakari first. I'll have her attack somebody else, though. Can maybe stun it, stun the other enemy. Nice. Perfect enemy is stunned too because they can poison you. Nope, don't attack that one. Here we get earning badge, okay. Let me check that out after I my controller would stop messing up. Lucky money badge. Moderately boost Bakwa drop rate. Ooh. That's pretty good. Um I have to give it to somebody. I guess I'll give it to her. But I gotta remember to take that off of her whenever I switch her out of the party. That's something you're always gonna want to have equipped. Very useful accessory. Rune of Water Enchantment. Okay, there's nothing over there to the left. Okay. 
We're almost done. One more battle and that's it. Oh, right at the end we got a new enemy. Aqua Soul. Six of them. Holy crap. Might be a little bit hard. They're pretty slow though at least. I like how, uh, like, I didn't mention this before, but I like how Yumi, it says her name and it shows Yumi there, but it, it's really friend if you think about it. It should be friend's portrait there, you know, but they, they put Yumi's portrait there. <laughs> kind of funny. But, but, yeah, Yumi's like my favorite character. Because of friend, of course. Quiet, everybody. Look there. Yes, exactly. The former king's idiot son is utterly incapable of making up his mind. But I assure you, I will make him consent to this. Considering the debt his family owes me, he is in no position to refuse. Hmm. Very well. Just keep a level head, Lord Counselor. You still have time. Focus on making steady progress. I shall. Uh, and, if I may, has word of my efforts reached Duke Zaldrick? Oh, yes. And he rewards his capable allies most handsomely. That I promise you. <laughs> Music to my ear. And yet you demanded a contract written in the Duke's own hand. Not the most trusting of men, are you? Hmm. Is something the matter? Nothing of import. The Dukes is pleased with your work thus far. Just see that you make steady progress. I will not fail you. Farewell for now, Lord Counselor. The conniving vixen. Who does she think she is? Still, if I play my cards right, my dream of sitting the Eucrisian throne may yet come true. <laughs> it's her! I knew it! The woman in the mask? Who is she? We saw her at the Rune Barrows working with an Imperial spy. Interesting. But not as interesting as the story we just heard. In all his distrustfulness, Harlan has finally done something to serve his country. Yep. Let's go find that contract she took. Say what now? We just got... A man's underwear? What the heck? What does it say as a description of it? I don't, I don't even know if I want to read it. An unfortunate find. Wow. 
Yeah, that is pretty unfortunate. Don't give it to any of the weirdos in my party. They might actually start sniffing it. Who, I'm trying to think of who's weird that we've recruited so far. Um, that one hunter guy is pretty weird. Don't show him that dude's underwear because that dude might sniff it. I forget the dude's name. The, the hunter guy, though, is who I'm talking about. The, flam the flamboyant guy. He might actually sniff that dude's underwear. Weird. It appears legitimate. So we just take this and hustle our buns out of here? Yeah. That scholar guy wouldn't know what to do with it. There can be no mistake. This is a contract drafted by Dukes Aldrich. It's written in the same hand as his letter to King Yuma. Then we have proof of Harlan's betrayal. We do indeed. So now, you, Chris, is gonna fight the Empire, right? Right, guys? Uh, will it, though? I think we may require one more push to help our king find his resolve. What kind of push are we talking here? If I may, Commander Noah, I have a little job for you. Very well. I shall head to the palace straight away and sow the necessary seeds. Gotta be honest, I'm not sure what to make of this plan. Melleridge clearly has something in mind. Are you feeling confident about those acting chops, Noah? Uh, m maybe? You can do it! Unfounded confidence is an actor's greatest weapon! The commander of the Alliance can do anything if he puts his mind to it, yes? Uh, sure. I guess. Go to the palace, okay. We will head on over there then. Let's look around though, see if there's anybody new around here. Oh, that leaves. I didn't think I was at the exit. Sometimes new people show up every now and then. You guys already know that though. If you played the Swicketing games, you do. Oh, I must... What is he missing? Hmm. Oh, bark people. I wonder if you get that from that one village. I'm not sure. Might go look and see if I can get it. But I don't see anybody else here. Pearls are slightly higher right now, but I could sell these for a lot more somewhere else, so I'm going to go ahead and buy them. Matter of fact, I might go do that now, in fact. I'm a Just 
just to make a little bit of profit. Yeah, look at that. Double the profit. Basically. I'm a boom, boom, boom. Huh. Boom. Boom, boom. So with the trading post, you don't even need to get money from, like... Y you know how... You could turn off getting Bakwa from fighting enemies. You don't even need that on because you could just get make money off the trading post. And that's usually good enough. But if you plan to 100% the game, you probably need both. Because if you're going to upgrade every character's weapon to 16, it's going to be a lot of money. Like a ridiculous amount of money if you plan to get every character to level 16 weapon if 16 is even the max it might it might be even higher than that I don't know I'm just assuming 16 is the max because that was that's what the max was in speak it in anyway let's enter that palace here well then your majesty have you made your decision? All of you, Chris awaits your word, for your actions this day could herald a bright new era for our king. In fact, I understand that Duke Saldric's research into new uses for rune lenses is making great strides. I'm endlessly impressed at your ability to vomit out nonsense you don't believe in. Oh, you're a politician born and bred. Or perhaps merely a swindler. How many times must I remind you that you are here as an observer, Countess? Your Majesty, in light of the Countess's continuous interruptions, I suggest you have her removed. Your father would not have tolerated such impudence from a guest. A but... If anyone is removed here, it will be you, Lord Harlan. What? How dare you? You're up, Noah. Go get him. Lord Harlan is a traitor who has conspired to sell out Eucharist to Dukes Aldrich for his own personal gain. Traitor? Uh, personal gain? What? Who do you think you are? The fact you cobbled together some pathetic army out of defeated troops gives you no right to speak to me so. Unless you come bearing proof of this outrageous claim, I suggest you take your seat! My proof is this contract sent by Duke Saldrick to Lord Harlan. It says, and I quote, should Lord Harlan secure Eucharist's surrender, he shall retain his wealth and status and be given high standing after the dissolution of the Sheerith dynasty. It's all right here on the page. This, um, well, the handwriting does seem to match the letter I received from the Dukes. You damnable varlet! Where did you get that? Oh! Ah, no, no, you, you see. It seems you are familiar with this document, Lord Harlan. N no, of course not. You betrayed me, Lord Harlan. Betrayed your king and your kingdom. Everything I have done was for the benefit of you, Chris. You must believe me. I... I... Cassius! Guards! Prepare the special chamber for Lord Harlan. I have a great many questions to ask him. 
<clears throat> you have it all wrong. I am no traitor. In fact, had your father still reigned, this need never have happened. <clears throat> but instead, we have you, Yuma. You! And you, Chris, cannot persevere with an heir so foolish and feckless. You are driving our kingdom to ruin. What choice did I have but to ally with the Empire? Get him out of here, now! Do you understand now, Yuma? I, I mean, your majesty. Now that you've seen the contract, are Duke's Aldrich's motives not exceedingly clear? The man has no intention of allowing the Shirith dynasty to continue. <sighs> Such treachery. If the Dukes was willing to do away with the royal family, what would he have done to us? <clears throat> I choose to do all in my power to help Commander Noah of the Alliance. He's a man I can count on, and I will fight at his side. Oh. Apologies, Periel. Apologies, Lord Counselors. I just... I need a little more time. There might yet be truth to what Harlan said. Oof. Well, so much for that. I knew Yuma struggled with decisions, but I had no idea he was this bad. Still, we've done all we can for now. Lord Harlan is in custody, so I will spend the night here. The rest of you may make yourselves comfortable. Just stay out of the back chamber. Oh, come on. I bet there's rows of beds in there. You can spare one. Fine, but just... All right, talk to Yuma, okay. We we'll talk to the king. The indecisive king. Oh, this place looks pretty cool at night. All lit up and everything. Noah. Are you all by yourself? I am. They changed the guards around this time, which gives me an opportunity to slip away. It's been my chance to go on little adventures ever since I was a child. Uh, not that I've ever left the palace grounds or anything. <laughs> that would be much too scary. In fact, this right here is about the extent of my adventuring zeal. I spoke to Melrich and learned of how you and Periel snuck into Harlan's manor to secure the contract. Periel really trusts you, doesn't she? No, more than that. She relies on you. How I envy that. Doesn't she rely on you too? I mean, you're the first person she turned to when Galdia attacked, and she's still appealing to you now. She must really trust you. I would be delighted if that were the case, but is it really me she was counting on, or did she merely turn to me because I happen to be the person on the throne? I adore Periel. The way she's always spoken her mind, even when we were children, despite growing up in circumstances not unlike mine, She's never afraid to be herself and do what she wants. She's ever pushing forward. Well, I'm from a small village, so I can't imagine what you've been through, but you look like a fighter to me. Is that not the case? Oh, heavens no. I'm worthless. Everyone thinks so, and they're quite right. Oh, I made a few clumsy attempts when I first inherited the throne. But I was never able to rule skillfully as my father did. And now, at the time of my country's greatest crisis, 
I still can't make up my mind. Instead of deciding, I fixate on all the tragedy my decisions might cause and simply freeze. Harlan had the right of it. I'm a feckless fool of a king. Who would ever follow a ruler like me? I just... That isn't true! That just isn't true! You aren't a bad king at all, your majesty! What? You are absolutely and completely wrong about yourself, and you mistake your kindness for weakness. I know how hard you work at being king. I know better than anyone, so please don't speak ill of yourself. It's everyone else's loss if they don't understand what a wonderful ruler you are. Thank you, Yulin. But I will never live up to my father. There's wisdom in her words, your majesty. People have you wrong. Indeed, you have yourself wrong. Now, I grant you may not currently be ruling with the skill and finesse of your father, but you're holding yourself up to a monarch with years of experience already behind him. Surely you can see how superficial it is to compare that man to a king who has taken but the first steps of his reign. A fledgling knight is no match for a hardened veteran. And yet... A future. And I would not have you discard yours so lightly, my king. Oh, Melrich. You in? Oh, uh, forgive me, Your Majesty. Uh, I was dreadfully out of line to speak to you like that. I will accept any punishment you see fit. Then your punishment is to tell me the truth. Do you really believe I can become a good king? <gasps> of course I do. You will be a, a kind king, and a great one, I I'm sure of it. Thank you. I will. Or at least I shall try to. I cannot express what an honor it is to fight alongside a man of your esteem, General Goldwyn. Mm-hmm. If I may, General, I hear we'll be entering Eucharist territory soon. When do you anticipate being able to report our victory to Dukes Aldrich? I must contemplate how best to compose the message. It is folly to contrive victories from unfought battles. A warrior must approach every enemy with equal sincerity. But who could Eucharist field who has any hope of victory against you? General Cassius is a steady hand who commands the love of his men, and I hear the kingdom is home to another formidable mind as well. And also... Yes? I take to the battlefield for our Emperor, despite the great pains Aldric went through to convince His Excellency of this campaign's merit. I do not fight for the Duke. Oh, good morning, all. I take it you spent the night here? Guys, you are not going to believe this, Periel! Ow! Loose lips, darling. Come, Noah. We're leaving. All right. Um, head to the palace. Actually, I probably should save it first. In case we get to, like, w w any, like, war battles or anything. I think that's where we're, what we're going to be coming up on. If I had to guess.
War battles aren't very good though. We only did one so far, but it was really confusing. I didn't even know what was going on. Hopefully the next one will be a little bit better and I'll understand it more, but I was confused. I just did stuff and I won. Announcing His Majesty, King Yuma. Have you reached a decision, sir? If you require a messenger to go to Duke's Aldrich, I am yours to command. This is it. What's it going to be? I come bearing urgent news. Your Majesty, it seems an Imperial Expeditionary Force has been sighted. It is under the command of General Goldwyn, and outnumbers our army two to one. Double our numbers? And General Goldwyn? The man is said to be invincible. Uh. Your Majesty! I have always been a worthless man, Periel. I am incapable of making decisions and paralyzed with fear of how others might view me. I have ever been a coward. I acknowledge this. General Cassius? Yes, my king. Melrich? Your Majesty. For a period of two weeks, beginning now, I entrust to the two of you the entirety of my royal authority. You are to make every decision, for I have no doubt you are more capable of selecting the right choices than I. Call it a coward's conviction if it please you. Regardless, it is the best decision I can must. What folly is this? Has His Majesty taken leave of his sense? Royal authority to a mere general and a lecturer at the studium? Say the word, Your Majesty, and we lords are ready to lead in your stead. The both of you must refuse this. It will plunge the kingdom into chaos. Folly from your fool of a king. Yet all the more reason to do it. Pitiful I may be, but I beg of you to. Save our kingdom. But... Are you quite certain? After all, what's to stop the General and myself from eliminating you should we come to enjoy this little taste of power? If that is your choice, then so be it. Were you to do such a thing, I believe it would be for the sake of the kingdom. Your Majesty. Long have I sworn my service and loyalty to House Sheerith, your majesty. But now, I pledge it anew to you, Yuma Sheerith, the man before whom I now take the... I shall answer the trust you have placed in me with all of my heart and ability. I do not know if my talents are worthy of the faith you place in them, your majesty. In fact, it speaks to their inadequacy that I have so clearly misjudged you. And for that, I must atone. Whatever shreds of wit and talent I still possess, I swear to you. As if any of this gives us a chance against the Empire! Your majesty, it's not too late. We can still draft a letter of intent to Jukes Eldrick and... General Cassius. Any hope of successfully defending this kingdom will require the full efforts of her people and the full unity of her spirit. The army will be mustered and the realm's efforts devoted entirely to its defense. Any who choose to publicly object to His Majesty's wishes will be executed on the spot. Mm -hmm. I'm not certain such jubilant optimism is appropriate. As General Cassius noted, it will require all the strength you, Chris, can muster to have even a chance of victory. And we'll be right beside you. Agreed. This is everything we've been striving for. 
Then allow me to formally request the support of the Alliance. You shall have it and more. We'll return to the inn and have Janequist beat the muster drums. Yep, and just like I said, I knew there was going to be a war battle coming up. I could feel it. And that's what's about to happen soon. Let's go to the palace and see if we can talk to them. See if they have anything interesting to say. There's nobody here. Never mind then. Alright. I shall contact Emir and have him commence preparations straight away, milady. Send me. I'll get your message there, say. Shall I set this in motion, Commander? Maybe hold on a second. Understood. I shall be here when you are. Oops, I apologize for that. I accidentally maxed the volume out. <laughs> Rest in peace, headphone users. Uh, sorry about that. I did not mean to do that. I meant to decrease the volume, not increase the volume, but... Anyway, I'm going to save it here and I'm going to end the video here, actually. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Later.